Welcome all. My name is Johan Hotler. I'm a master mariner. I have been working about 10 years on board car carriers, an officer and chief officer, total about 15 years at sea. Uh, last years I was uh, supercargo handling vessels and cargo uh, in different ports in Europe. Since 2010, I'm a maritime lecturer at Chalmers University of Technology. I have six years experience of teaching in navigation, mostly uh, focus on electronic navigation, electronic charts, ECDIS, uh, both theory, theory lessons, and also in the simulator within the practical field, uh, see how do the students work as a proficiency in the simulators. Linked to this, two years ago I started on a um, journey as a PhD and hopefully I will finish somewhere around 2020. And the main subject from all my PhD work would be to look into what is professional knowledge. Uh, I believe there's something more than just the teaching syllabus, something more than just what's stated in the books, uh, what's stated in the rules, to make a competent, good navigation officer, you need to have something more. Tested knowledge, backbone knowledge, call it what you like, but I'm interested to find out if we could put words on it, and if we have words on it, then we could probably bring some of that to our students. Um, linked to Manila, I'm also interested to look into how to do assessment in the simulators, assess proficiency, not just knowledge. To make a perfect triangle, I'm heading the Master Mariner program, Master Mariner Education at Chalmers, uh, and my really vision there is to look into the education of tomorrow officers 2025 what will be the demands what will be the knowledge and the competence needed to be a successful officer in a pure international labor market with no national borders probably no, no borders at all on board a vessel we will see indian captain Croatian chief officer with the Scandinavian second officer and the Filipinos uh, third officer. That will be the normal uh, in 10 years from now. That's what I believe. The background for this study uh, was to focus on when we look into the Colreg coming from my teaching. Uh, in the rules, more or less based on the two ship scenarios uh, and how to act uh, in those scenarios but in the real world there are intense traffic areas the multi-ship scenarios and how do you act and how do you follow call regs in those kind of scenarios so we would look into that uh, also SSC Manila put demands on uh, academies to do examination on proficiency level and what is proficiency more than just knowledge when it comes to Colreg. It's probably more than just the rules. It boiled down to a simple research question for this study. How do experienced mariners perceive vessel risk in constricted navigation? The aim of the study when I was talking to my professor uh, was just to benchmark professional competence in multi-ship scenarios. So just do a scenarios, run scenarios and try to put words on this professional competence. We have three different areas to focus on. is the perceived risk uh, focus areas. The essay situation awareness, of course, and also we were interested to see if we could find something in the decision making process leading to a decision uh, amongst professionals. As a method for the study, we constructed three scenarios in Kongsberg Simulator. Uh, we took data for the scenarios from uh, AIS, 
basically I went out to marine traffic, watching two days in different areas around the world, and try to put something concrete, conclusion from watching uh, AIS data, and mixed with my own experience as an officer to find out scenarios that could lead to some answers on, on our uh, main question and the aim with the study. We then came up with three different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario was an open water scenario with no navigation restrictions. We just like the test subjects to drive without looking at the chart. Just have different targets on an ARPA display and see how they would act in that kind of uh, scenario. The second one was to bring the multi-ship scenario with the, with the many targets into a navigational chart settings. Then we went into Calais, that's why it's called Calais. As an add-on, we would then have shallow area restrictions and we also added a navtex area, a diving area, uh, which they receive as the safety message uh, at the setup at the start of the, the scenario. The last scenario we like like to take the multi ship, the, the the close quarter situations, bring in the call reg, and then we design the TSS scheme. Which this is basically there's no physical restrictions uh, how to navigate in those waters. It's just line drawn on a paper. Uh, so that's what we would like to see in the third scenario. Of course, some of the tests have been started on the first scenario, some on the, on the second and some on the third, just to not get any biased effect or learning effects uh, in the study. We capture data in three different ways. Uh, first of all, we made video recording on the bridge, actually we were filming the, the ARPA screen and uh, collecting the voice. We designed and researched as a co-pilot so the test subject would think out loud, share their thoughts, so we later could analyze the decision making process and also the situation awareness uh, amongst the test subjects. At least that was our aim. We made a survey uh, at the end of each scenario, we stopped the scenario and they were asked to rank perceived risk from 1 to 4. And we followed up with a focus group interview at the end uh, with the subjects. Mostly to just to confirm what we would find in the survey. Uh, and if that data, the quantity data was also quality data uh, uh, confirmed. Due to time restrictions in, in this presentation, I could not go into all the three scenarios. You will find it in the papers, you will find results, and you will also find conclusions. In the paper, you also have a Colreg analysis um, at the start of each section. And that's what we try to compare later on, the actual behavior the acting of the professionals and also the pure call reg analysts from a two ship perspective. So going into Calais, this is the second scenario. I have chosen Calais because I think it's a great scenario and also that the results are representative for all the three uh, scenarios and by that the whole study. Just to get you into the whole picture of the scenario before we go on to the results and the conclusions. Be in mind the conclusions are very interesting. Uh, so bear with me, even though I'm an experienced mariner, uh, there were some surprises uh, for myself and probably there will be surprises for you as well uh, in the results and the conclusions. In the scenario, own ship, red track. The subjects were instructed to start and then just maintain course and speed until the fall felt that they were necessary to adjust. Follow red track into the port of Calais, acting as they would be driving this Roro vessel on board. 
outbound vessels. You have the green track. There are a couple of coasters falling, falling the green track. You have a coaster going across the shallow bank, uh, blocking the entrance to Calais. The yellow track is a cruising vessel. You will see it later on when I show videos uh, from the bridge and from the scenario. There, there will be a conflict with own vessel. Uh, there's also small areas with fishing boats that were quite obvious when looking into AES data that they somehow divide traffic uh, in real life. The white track is a container vessel looking to be going for the pilot station and Calais, but later on just going around the navtex area, uh, the diving area uh, stated in safety message. Orange tracks, a tanker and a bulk carrier coming in to uh, Port of Calais. Outbound is another vessel coming, just falling out. But there's no information if the outbound vessels are going up northeast, northwest, or falling out to west. There's no ECDIS or any AIS data in this scenario. I just like you to watch a movie from the capture on the bridge. This is to set you into the scenario and how did how it looked for the test subjects. This is a couple of minutes into the run. Own vessel coming here with the red vector. Here you soon see the passenger vessel turning to port to avoid the small area with fishing boats. Most of the test subjects really were focusing on the passenger vessel and also early saw that she had to go either north or to the east of the small boats and discussing uh, what would be their actions. Small coaster coming out around the buoy, later on turning up to northeast. Right here you have number 10. Uh, remember number 10. When we come to results, number 10 will have a big impact. Here you have the vessel coming in and later on going out on, uh, on the other side of the diving area. As you can see, it's not that crowded. Uh, you have vessels coming and going all over the place, uh, but not much more than just an ordinary day at work. Not more, not much more than that. I will quickly jump to the final scene, and this is how it looked just before we stopped the scenario and we asked the test subject to rank the perceived risk one to four. Own vessel following the cruising vessel. This is number ten now coming up around the buoy. Remember, test subject does not know if number 10 is going north east or not west or just going continue north up to let's say Dover. Here you had the bulk carrier number 25, remember 25. For this test subject there's no vector, still there's a lot of focus on this particular target. Jumping into the results, this is the screenshot, how it looked when we stopped the scenarios where the test we were asked to rank. Number 10, number 25, number 1, the cruise vessels. They were asked to rank, number 1 gave 4 points, going down to number 4 going 1 point. And when we aggregate the results from 10 professional uh, test subjects, we see that number 10 and 25 are second, first and second, and there's so little difference, so you could not say that the either one is one or two. Then it comes up to 24. Number one is the cruising vessel, which is a very close vessel. 
uh, but going a little bit faster and still ahead of you. When we aggregate the results, we could see that there is a statistical significant, see that number one and two are different from the rest. So we, our conclusion is that professional mariners focus on two targets, two risks. Uh, and they could say that this is the two most areas where I put my focus. Then it would be start different. Three, four, five, six is not that clear uh, among professionals. This could also be supported by theory made, made by Gary Klein, sources of power. He's talking about that somebody could follow two to three factors into at the most six stages when it comes to rapid decision making and it's supporting each other. Also from the focus group interview and this is a little bit uh, strange from my pers personal belief within the safety zone so let's say that within 0 0.5 miles you feel threatened uh, by the other target. It seems like there's a timeline how you perceive risk. The TCPA are more important than the CPA. Uh, talking to some other researcher that was part of the study but is not a mariner is a little bit peculiar as, as from a pure risk perspective. Target A with 0 0.1 miles and 9 minutes TCA, TCPA are probably a bigger risk from a collision perspective than target B with 0 0.5 miles and just 6 minutes TCPA. But our test subjects, they would risk number B as a higher risk because it's coming earlier in their timeline. Maybe not strange for professionals, but it could not be from a pure risk perspective. Other results which would lead into the next study. And I will also invite all of you to find me at the coffee or in the bar later on or at the sunset cruise to start talking about pattern recognition. It seems in this study, both from the video recording on the bridge and also in the focus group interviews in all three scenarios, it seems like the subjects analyze the traffic situation, try to find a pattern, how you move, and then try to follow the pattern uh, themselves, just not to disturb how other vessels uh, navigate. It's also that in the Calais scenario, one subject in the interview clearly stated that the outbound vessel will probably follow the vessel ahead because it's coming from the same way and based on that uh, pattern of vessels coming out from Calais going up northeast, he decided to navigate and keep a little bit to the west. Even though there was no real information that the vessel he was talking about would go northeast. Just a pattern of previous vessels. These results could be supported by theory in licentiate thesis by Anders Brodje looking at VTS operators. You could find it in a podcast where Anders is talking about this. Uh, some of the knowledge amongst VTS operators are just our pattern recognition. And the interesting part is of course when things doesn't act as the predominant pattern. Then you realize something is wrong. Just finally, uh, how, uh, half a minute more before my 20 minutes. This presentation you can find again. Uh, I have recorded it yesterday. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, and feel free to contact me via email. Grab me at the coffee and we could talk about pattern recognition. We could talk about perceived risk, especially assessment in simulators. Thank you all. Bye.